Welcome back to the Chris Salcedo Show on Newsmax TV. Here's what's trending at the bottom of the hour. Controversial left-wing Catholic Pope, Pope Francis, has reversed policies of his predecessor, Pope Benedict, pertaining to the Latin Masses. 2007, Pope Benedict relaxed restrictions on celebrating the Latin Mass within the Catholic Church. Traditional Catholics celebrated the move. But today, Pope Francis reimposed draconian restrictions on the Latin Mass, further dividing the Church. Joining us to discuss is the National Director of Priests for Life and Newsmax contributor, Father Frank Pavone. Father, always wonderful to see you. you know, I go to a post-Vatican II church. My goddaughter yeah. and her family, they go to a traditional Latin Mass church. Everybody's unified, which is what Catholic means, right? Unity. Everyone is happy. Now, here comes Pope Francis seeming, seemingly sowing division. What's your take on this? Well, you know, this is, uh, it reminds me of that old saying, you know, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. And, and this, this uh, decision today by the Pope is uh, being greeted by a lot of people with uh, dismay because they're saying, first of all, it doesn't seem to have uh, uh, the, 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 the feel of charity. This is a pastoral issue, it seems to me. There are many, many people out there. And what's surprising here is that Pope Francis, you know, uh, I mean, God bless him. He's always thinking about people who are at the fringes of the church, people who are, you know, maybe they feel alienated from the church. And he always wants to give them the sense that, you know, no matter how different you are, you belong. Now, that goes for Catholics who are uh, more traditional, as you say, some who prefer the Mass the way it was before Vatican II. And it, it seems to me that the pastoral actions he takes and that individual bishops are still free to take because they can permit this, this form of the Mass in their diocese or not, uh, needs to be motivated by that pastoral charity. For those who feel like, uh, you know, I, I'm not so sure I want to stay in the Catholic Church because they're doing away with all this tradition— that's a very important pastoral concern as well, and that may not be adequately yeah. getting addressed at this moment. Well, Father, I looked at the, the, the hoops you got to jump through to continue the Latin Mass. I mean, it's like you got to fill out forms in triplicate. There's a layer of bureaucracy he just added just to do the Latin Mass. I don't think it's, it's acceptable, in my opinion, this Catholic's opinion. Father, isn't this, though, really about, about money? During the China virus lockdowns, the Latin Mass churches did not shut down causing their parishes to grow exponentially. Isn't Francis playing politics with this like he does a lot of things? I mean, because there are a lot about the, the uh, post-Vatican II churches are complaining that they lost a lot of folks to these traditional uh, Latin mass churches. You know, uh, that's an interesting perspective, Chris. You know, I, I have been dismayed many times uh, in my own dealings with the, uh, some of the hierarchy in, in terms of my full-time pro-life work with Priests for Life, at how money, uh, you know, I mean, Scripture itself says, right, the love of money is the root of all evil. And very often that's a motivation that, you know, creeps its way in, and it, sh it really has no place when it comes to matters of the church. So, you know, I, I, we, we don't know, we can't judge the inside of a person's mind or heart, but, uh, you know, certainly we all know that that's a, that's a corrupt motive that does influence so much of what happens uh, both in church and state. Uh, but, you know, another thing connected with this, too, is, you know, what a person believes about Vatican II, because with the Second Vatican Council, as the liturgy changed, uh, the, the, you know, many people connect the change in the liturgy with, you know, everything else that the Council stands for. And it is important that we see as, as Catholics that, you know, Vatican Council, the Second Vatican Council had a lot of important and good things to it. It's a valid council. Uh, it's important to read the documents. It didn't throw away the things from uh, the past. It didn't undo the decrees of the Council of Trent, for example. And and so, you know, there's uh, lessons for people on, on all ends of the spectrum here. You know, just as he's saying to traditional Catholics, you know, you can't look down on Vatican II. Uh, he needs to be saying to more liberal Catholics, you know, you can't look down on the Council of Trent or, or yeah. all the dogmas that we've inherited from the centuries, right? We're one church. Well, Father, yeah I, I, yeah, I believe that too. And Father, I'm just sick and tired of the politics getting into yeah. my church being allowed in by the quote-unquote leadership of the church. Father Frank Pavone, God's blessing, sir. Thank you, as always, for coming on the Chris Salcedo Show. 
Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.